Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is the first in Absolute Ages of the Pastycast series. I'm Chris. And I'm Laura. And we are here for this special Pastycast, bringing it back to you to talk about um, the Stendhal uh, festival that's coming up uh, for a very special reason and that is uh, going to be made clear later on. So just a few things to run through. One, the new site is up. We've had that up for a month or two now, a couple of months. So check that out if you haven't already. It looks so swish. Also, in addition to that, we decided to step up our game and we um, had been looking for, we'd taken all our ads off maybe a year ago because we're just sick of like seeing Netflix ads and all that sort of crap. So one of the things we decided to do was not to put ads on until we found people who we thought were appropriate for that. One of the people we found was Stendhal um, and we contacted them and basically uh, decided to uh, help them sort of advertise Stendhal. And in addition to that, we decided to become a sponsor. Yep, and if you go onto the website, you can see uh, there's we adverts now on the side. Their images are up there, adding something a bit new to the website. If anybody's interested, um, after Stendhal's over and advertising the site and you are local um, and we think it's a good fit, uh, email chris at pastybap.com um, and we're more than happy to try and work something out with uh, companies and stuff like that in around Northern Ireland. But moving on from that there, um, Stendhal is a festival that um, we haven't been to uh, yet, but we were looking since Glasgow Bay for something to sort of uh, replace what Glasgow Bay filled and we didn't sort of, um, once that had gone, we didn't really go to anything. So this year we decided to look around and see what we thought was going to be that replacement. We thought um, that this was it. We also like Sunflower Fest, looks, looks like a good festival as well. That's come up this weekend. Yeah, we haven't been to it either. I no. mean, we are going, we're going to it this year as well. We're going to both this year. So this year, Stendhal, perhaps next year, will be sponsor, sponsoring Sunflower Fest. Both seem good and we're going to have um, good coverage on the site for both. Uh, but we seem to us, they seem like the best fits um, for sort of uh, something to do now that Glasgow Bray has gone away. They actually are both quite interesting because they're not just your standard music festival. Mm-hmm. There's art, there's comedy, there's spoken word. There's yeah. a lot of other things going on and they seem to be very focused on family friendly and sort of offering something a little bit different. Yeah, so with that in mind, we're going to kick off with a tune from one of the bands that is playing at this year's Stendhal, and that is R51, and this is absolutely nothing. What we got here is absolutely nothing at all. If I could, yeah, I would, I would never bleed at all. So you give them all they want I stand here waiting for my turn For what I want You and I have got to
So that was R51 with absolutely nothing. Um, some great female fronted rock. If you want to he- learn more about them, you can go onto the website as well. And we have a we actually reviewed their yeah. uh, EP. So um, basically, the way we're going to conduct this is Laura went on a tour of the festival and she done most of the research and stuff like that there into sort of um, uh, which one seemed most appealing to us. Um, uh, mine was down basically to the fact that Donovan's playing and my wife likes Donovan. But um, I'm going to I'm going to question Laura about this and together we're going to find out more about Stendhal. So Laura, how long has the festival been going for? It's been going for five years. This will be the fifth year. Um, sort of started off quite small, not quite small actually, in terms of a festival. I mean, they're pretty big. But it started off a lot smaller than it is now. It's uh, it's on a, the Ballymalee Cottage Farm, which is a family-run farm. This is in Limavady. In Well, I was going to say the heart, but the outskirts of Limavady. Okay. It's actually surprisingly easy to get to and find. Yeah, um, but it is in the country. But it is in the country, as these things usually are. Um, but it's, That's so you don't disturb anybody? Well, yeah. I mean, so Glasgow was up a mountain. This is in the country. Um... Some of is in Hillsborough, so this is like, yeah, so this is the... The good thing about Northern Irish festivals as well is they're all sort of set in picturesque, uh, really nice places. It's not just sort of, you know what I mean, out the back of some shops or whatever. It's, there's always, there's rolling fields, all that kind of good stuff. And it's, it's a kind of uh, family run thing, yes? Yep, family run. Basically, um, I went on the site tour, I went up and met John, who's one of the organisers, um, his dad owns the farm. And he basically decided to start a festival to sort of bring a bit of, not culture, but some music and some... Ideas sort together. Of, uh, yeah, and sort of bring that to the people of Limavady and uh, further beyond. And he, I think he's sort of just taken over his dad's farm. Yeah, it's a working farm. <clears throat> a completely working farm, yep. But um, you can see we were up there, they were uh, sorting things out, setting up the drainage and all that kind of stuff. And I genuinely just think that he's sort of gone off and decided to... Yeah, so one of the things that they have on the website is that um, it's constituted not for profit um, and it's got ambitions of becoming a cooperative by 2015. This is what they've got on their website. I don't know if that's become a reality yet, but it's going to be by the end of this year after they perhaps get what they make from this to push into that there. And they're hoping that this will be the first stakeholder-owned festival um, to help promote arts mainly. Um, And it's run by predominantly volunteers as well, over 70 volunteers. Yep, loads of volunteers. Everyone's doing it sort of free of charge for the... Sort of for the love of it. Mm-hmm. And when you were up there, there's photos now you can see on the website and on the Facebook stuff I got there of like, there's little art bits going all around. It looks like there's loads of nooks and crannies. There was artists and stuff up there. There was artists there, the artists in res- residence. And there's sort of a couple of wee outhouses and places for them to sort of get on with their work. And they're all there now. I think they've been there or they will have been there maybe for a week before. And they're staying up in the uh, glamping area at the minute. And they sort of are just, they're just all hanging out, chatting, sort of getting on with their art and preparing things for the festival. They're going to have like a sort of a, their own artist's area, mm-hmm. which is sort of, um, it's blocked off by uh, trees and they've sort of built that wee area themselves. They've built all the fences out of the trees and they're obviously doing all the art themselves. So I think that'll be really interesting to actually see the finished product. Okay. And so with that in mind, um, we're going to go into another chin here. This is by uh, Go Wolf.
I'm Laura Caldwell here from pastybap.com and I'm here at the Stendhal Festival site in Limavady. I'm here with John who's just going to tell you a bit about what's going on at the festival and what it's all about. Hello, thanks very much for having me. I'm John, I'm down at Stendhal Festival of Art uh, at Ballymolly Cottage Farm in Limavady. Um, we're two weeks to go until uh, until our fifth anniversary, our fifth birthday and uh, yeah we're just sort of we're crossing the I's and dotting the T's and getting everything sort of ship shape for everybody landing on the 7th and 8th. Stendhal Festival of Art is uh, an all-encompassing music and arts festival which um, which happens every year now, it's, but this, as I say, this is our fifth, uh, our fifth event. Um, we try and bring the best of music, comedy, art, poetry um, and anything that takes a little bit of creativity and a little bit of craft all under, uh, all under the site for a weekend of uh, just a weekend of good banter, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of music, uh, it's quite an eclectic mix. There's a lot of different acts and there's ones from all over the world. Who do you think are going to be the people that uh, everyone's going to be looking forward to? Well, I think this year our, 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 big, our big get was uh, Donovan. Um, this is, Donovan this year is um, celebrating 50, 50 years in the, in the industry. Um, he's a guy that has been there, done that. He was part of the initial wave of... Um, you know the the British invasion into the states in the 60s. He's, his music, um, you know, has appeared everywhere. Everybody sort of knows a little bit of Donovan. You know, um, so uh, as part of his 50th anniversary celebrations, he's playing Stendhal, um, his only Northern Irish gig of those celebrations. So I mean, it's a real good get for us. Um, delighted, absolutely delighted to have him um, as a guy that, as I say, has been there, done that. As you know, anyone that can count the Beatles as their friends is more than welcome to my house anytime. You know. Um, so I mean Donovan, we're hoping Donovan is is, is a big draw for folk. Um, we also we have a we have a we have a really we're really really pleased with our lineup this year. Uh, we've got um, Curb Dog, um, a crowd who were um, sort of who sort of were were big back in in the grunge days of when I was sort of listening to my music, and then they sort of felt they sort of disappeared for a while, but they come back now and do sort of select gigs, and uh, that that has been sort of apart from Donovan, that has been the sort of one band that people are sort of saying to me, oh, when are Curb Dog on? When are Curb Dog on? I need to see Curb Dog. And I was like, oh, that's okay. They will be playing on the Saturday, um, so we're happy, really, really happy to have them. Uh, we have Duke Special. We announced him last week. He's coming back. We have uh, we were promised Jetpacks and Father Son over from Scotland. Another couple of really really good um, bands with good followings over here. Um, some great stuff. Uh, we have Kila, who are one of the one of the, easily one of the best sort of traditional world uh, bands going in Ireland. They've been going for years, and in terms of just sort of a festival band. Uh, Get the crowd going, play some good stuff. Uh, they'll be a, they'll be a real highlight this year as well. But on top of that, I mean, there's there's a, all sorts of, of everything. Uh, I mean, there's we have over sixty bands playing this year, and um, and yeah, and each and every one of them has their own has their own selling points. And uh, we're hoping that a lot of people come down and discover a, a lot of new music this year. Yeah. And in terms of the, those lesser bands, who are you looking forward to personally? In ter- I suppose we don't we don't like to think of anyone as as, as lesser anything at Stendhal. Um, in terms of maybe the less well known bands and the bands that we would like people to maybe come down and discover for the first time, bands that would be kicking about the Northern Irish music scene. Um, there there's there's definitely ones that um, that need to be heard. Uh, Freak Serpent uh, for 
freaks from Strabane are a real favourite of mine at the minute. Um, Mecha Monsters from Derry, uh, they have a good following as well, but they are more people need to hear them because what they do, they are phenomenal at what they do. Um, Join Me in the Pines are a band led by um, Dave Gerdy from Bell X1. That's a wee side project. His more people need to hear him, um, and so we're just we're delighted to be giving guys like uh, Glenn Rosborough, uh, Kieran Lavery, uh, you know, jeepers, there's. There's all sorts, except for Super Bear from Loma Valley, um, a good crew from Loma Valley, we last called Emma Lusby, he's brilliant. Um, Lauren Bird, uh, Hannah McPhillamy, uh, Catherine Philippa has come on down. Catherine Philippa is, <laughs> I can't wait for people to see her. She's like literally you know, just goosebumps. She's phenomenal. Um, it's, all, it's, it's all guys that just sort of that deserve to have as many people as they possibly can see them. Um, and that's what we hope to do. We hope to, we hope to to get people that sort of maybe wouldn't be as involved in the Northern Irish music scene um, to see these bands and then check out their Facebooks, check out their, their SoundClouds, buy their EPs, give them YouTube views, go to their gigs when they're playing live, I suppose is the main thing, um, and, 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 you know, and just support the guys here because some of the guys here that every year there's somebody comes down and says, I've never heard tell them before, but they were phenomenal, but, you know, and these guys have been gigging around Belfast and stuff, and it's like, well, look a bit harder <laughs> you know these guys are out there and they're gigging every week and and there's just such phenomenal talent and to be able to give them a platform down in Limavati and in the wider northwest area I'm supposed to try and engage with them up here as opposed to maybe not Belfast and maybe not Derry is, is really important for us so I mean there's every band that we have booked is booked for a reason um, and it's because we believe that they they offer something uh, either different or they just offer something top 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 class um, and so that's that's the main thing is is come down, check out stuff that you haven't heard of before, and go away thinking I should really listen to more local music, you know. And it's not just about the music. There's art. There's comedy. There's a lot of other things going on. Are there any secrets or sort of hidden gems that people can look forward to? Well, we always try and have a little bit of something um, that we don't sort of advertise, I suppose, as much as maybe we should, because we do like to keep bits and pieces of it sort of a surprise for folk. Um, there, there's always wee bits that happen that um, we don't announce, um, but I say I'm not going to tell you now because that will be sort of giving it away. Um, but for example, um, a couple of years ago we had, um, we had a, a pop-up uh, debate between Terry Hooley and Ian McCann at our art gallery. Um, which, I mean, not a lot of people saw it, uh, not a lot of people knew that it was happening because we didn't tell a lot of people it was happening, but whoever did see it and they knew who the two guys were, it was like, I, you know, I wasn't expecting this and this is something. That's, to me, that's the best thing about festivals is, is rocking around and seeing something that you weren't expecting to see or that you didn't know was happening. Or, I mean, for example, I was the last one, of, I was at a festival in London, um, Small World Festival, and I spent my Saturday night which is essentially the big night of a festival, I suppose. I spent my Saturday night in a tent with like six other people listening to poetry, and it's like I never thought that I would do that, but that was that was the highlight of my weekend. And I um, mean, and if I regularly, if I go to festivals, Saturday night is a band night, but it was like no, I'll go and try that, and I was really really glad I did. So I mean, that's I suppose that's what we're all about as well. Is like, come down, see something that you don't see every day in Lamavati or wherever you're coming from and just and roll with it and get into it and enjoy it because everything that we have sort of coming down here uh, makes for a really good weekend and really, really good entertainment. And finally, Stendhal, where does the name come from? It was coined by uh, a French writer. Stendhal syndrome is a psychosomatic illness which causes rapid heartbeat dizziness and sometimes hallucinations when an individual is exposed to a high quantity of high class art. It was coined by a, a French writer from the 18th century called Henry Bell and uh, he basically, when he was in Florence, he noticed that people, because back in the day I suppose there was no TV, there was no internet, there was no sort of visual stimuli that we get today and sort of take for granted, and pe he noticed that people would sort of come across these great works of art and they would just sort of be overcome by it and, uh, and I suppose we were sitting, we were sitting sort of eight years ago now trying to come up with a name for this and we could have been Lamavari Fest or Farm <laughs> Stock or uh, you know and we were coming up with all these just horrific names and uh, and I was I was um, I was actually doing a bit I was actually looking up uh, Synthesia um, for a different thing altogether and I came across an article that <laughs> on the internet that was rhyming off all these sort of diseases that are in uh, that are related to art and I came across this Stendhal uh, Syndrome and it was like 
Well, this is actually this is exactly what we're this is this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring um, art and culture and music and and the arts to Lamavari, which is sort of I, we grew up here and sort of growing up, we never had we never you know we never really had a concert hall. You know, we, any gigs you had to go to Derry, you had to go to Belfast. So we were sort of thinking that if if we brought all this to Lamavari. It, you know, it would be the first time a lot of people from this town got to sort of see all this sort of stuff um, on, on you know in the same place. So we thought that that uh, Stendhal just sort of worked. You know, um, thought it worked well. Um, but it's, it's it's all right in some ways with people. Stendhal, Stendhal, Stendhal. The people I still don't know how to say it. I don't know and spell it. I've had some quality spellings of it back to well. But uh, yeah, that's where it comes from. Um, from uh, yeah, from an illness that was noticed by a, a French writer in the 18th century. <laughs> so that was our Laura interviewing Mr. John Cartwright there. Um, Laura had a bit of a malfunction on that with the recording equipment, so we she had to record it. She had to record it on her iPhone. So. If the quality sucks, that's why. If the quality is good, then that's why. That could either be a great advertisement or not for the iPhone 6. Um, gives you a great amount of information. And w- one of the things that um, actually we were looking for when we were selecting this was we wanted a family-friendly festival, which seems to be a big plus for many. I've become a dad this year and probably one of the reasons why I haven't been to a festival in the last year or two. So that was something I was looking forward to. This actually is one awards this Laura? Yeah it won best family festival it actually won best small festival and best lineup at the Irish Festival Awards last year in 2014 so I mean what more could you ask for? Praise indeed it's not like when you go to Chippy and it's got like best Chippy 2004 <laughs> and you're like what has happened on the 11 years since then that you have not won this so I think that's uh, highly recommended there seems to be they've got a whole like page and um posts and stuff dedicated to their to their lineup for families they've got like I don't know, everyone from baby yoga to they've got like art painting sessions, they've got acoustic music for um that's suitable for children, it's not just so loud. Um other things they've got um done was like provisions and stuff and um Laura was saying that they've got certain provisions done for like rain because obviously this being Northern Ireland this is something they, they need to account for. You can't really escape it, but yeah, so sort of, sort of every uh, stage has a covered over area or every sort of place where there's going to be a lot of people concentrated yeah. there's an area for sort of quick duck and cover if yeah. the rain does start which you need to have um so uh, our, our photographer went last year and actually there's photographs up on the site you can see that he took last year at the festival he thoroughly enjoyed it um he didn't take his kids but i think he's perhaps going to go this year and take his kids as well another thing I thought worth me- worth mentioning was last year court blossomed on a podcast um after the fact 2014 we'll put a link up on our social media to that there as well and um, that's worth taking a listen to sort of find out what last year's were all about. Um, and that leads us into discussing the music. This is a big part of the festival. Any festival, although this is, I would say, art-centric, music does play a big part. And this is a really eclectic um, range of um, artists. You've got everything from, there's like an eight-piece ukulele band there. You've got like really current bands like Hot Cops and R51. And then, of course, you've got um, headline the whole thing, Donovan who I think Donovan's 69 and he hasn't toured in something like 20 years. Um, and the, you can fa- fact check that, uh, people, and let me know. And um, this is one of only a handful of gigs that he's doing um, in the UK. So Mr. Miller Yellow himself, uh, Donovan, who my wife is particularly looking forward to seeing. She is seven months pregnant, so if you see a seven months pregnant woman waiting up to all hours in the morning to see Donovan on the Friday night, that's, um, that's why. Um, other acts that I was liking from sort of the headlining section of it are Cormac's Big Band, who uh, electric, Electro Swing, uh, brilliant, Cormac's brilliant. The Big Band thing is new to me. I know like his own tunes, he does, you know, like self penned and he does DJ mix and stuff like that there. I, I love um, Cormac and the Big Band will just add to that feel. DJ Format bringing a bit of hip hop, best known for uh, music for Mature B-Boy, which I'm sure... Uh, was was a massive hit uh, a few years ago, and then Ireland's own Curb Dog, who are back on the scene rocking. Laura, any bands that you're looking forward to seeing? Yeah, well, there's actually quite a lot of bands that I am either not familiar with or not too familiar with. But mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to We Were Promised Jetpacks oh, and yeah. um, Televisor, which I've never I've never actually really even heard an awful lot of their stuff. But I, I mean, I think it would be good live and translate well. 
Um, there's a few others like Making Monsters, Sister Ghost, Go Wolf. I mean, it, the one thing that I think John was trying to stress is that it's music for everyone. Yeah, it's there not, should be something for everyone. Not every. just Northern Irish bands, not just one type of music, not yeah. just rock, not just whatever. It's sort of, he wants to expose you to yeah. things you might not have otherwise heard. Aside from the sort of eclectic music, uh, musical lineup, there's also a lot of, uh, I think the stages are going to be quite diverse and quite interesting. There's a lot of sort of different areas. It's not just the big, mm-hmm. uh, it should have been sort of at the back of a truck or the big white yeah tent there's um i think there's a circus tent style one which is always fun at a festival there's actually um sort of this wee tree house area that they've built for DJs oh yeah that, yeah you of. put a photo up on the website so yeah you can good. see that on the social media as well and i forgot to mention this earlier um but there's i think there's a microbrewery coming down to awesome. uh sort of bring some more interest and flavor to the whole thing um, and that's another thing. There, there's of course there's food, there's drink, there's kind of everything you can want, and you can camp over as well. Yep, there's family camping, there's regular camping. I think the camping's all sort of quiet camping, which is quite good. Mm. Um, there's glamping as well, which is uh, very popular these days. I think all in all, um, it's a good lineup. They've got uh, they've got good stuff going on with the food and the drink um, and all the art stuff going on. They just need the weather. Which you can never rely on over here. You can absolutely never rely on over here. So, like I say, we're very we're very proud to be sponsoring Stendhal and um, we'll be doing stuff throughout the next two weeks leading up to Stendhal. We will also be reporting afterwards from Stendhal and uh, we'll hopefully have pictures and reports and just whatever we can sort of get our hands on. And if you spot our banner there, do you take a picture with it and yes. send it to us. Yes, tweet it to us that. or Facebook because we uh, splashed out and got a big banner to put up. So uh, hopefully that some people see that and they will visit the site and give us a shout um, and, uh, and have a really good weekend. So in saying that, we're going to play our last tune and this is from a band that we've seen both seen before, both enjoy and are playing this weekend and I would heartily recommend you see them live they're they're only a two-piece but they are absolutely raucous and they are the bonnevilles and this is their i would say classic now good suits and fighting bits we shall see at stendhal and we'll see you up the front thank you from chris thank you from laura
Of course, you can find out more information at stendalfestival.com. Stendal is on Friday and Saturday, the 7th and 8th of August. Um, all the stuff on the website uh, covers everything from bands that are playing to uh, the family programme to everything that's going on for the whole weekend. They'll be releasing stage times, uh, stages and all that sort of stuff uh, near the time. We'll, of course, have you up to date on the website as well. And um, for more information, keep up to date with stendalfestival.com or on their Facebook or Twitter.